Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com or ColleenLemma.com. And it's March 29th, 2015 today, and I've been guided to do a Soul Reflections video. I do this on occasion, and it seems like it's been a really long time since I've done the last Soul Reflections video for you. And part of the reason for that is because it has been such an intense time since the beginning of the year with all of the energies happening. It's really been affecting me a great deal as well, and it's been a hugely busy time with getting my new website up and running and some of the changes that are going on on the site called Angel Messenger where I'm also a spiritual consultant. But even other than that, other than the career and destiny path of it all for me, there has been a lot of personal changes on a physical level going on too. And so I haven't been able to actually get to do this Soul Reflections video for you for quite some time just because of the intensity of the energies and how busy it's all been. So I was divinely guided today as I sit here and have a little bit of downtime and, and spirit has guided me to do a video for you on some of the up and coming changes. And it may feel like, you know, since we've had that Uranus Pluto square on March 16th, that maybe the energies have just released just a little bit. You know, up until that time, especially as we went through February and into the first half of March, it was hugely intense. I've had, you know, so many people Facebook messaging me or sending me emails, uh, even commenting on some of the posts that I've done and asking me various questions about when is this going to let up and what's happening here and and just, a, you know, a lot of changes and redirections happening in people's lives. And then, again, like I said, we had the Pluto-Uranus square, the seventh Pluto-Uranus square, and the last Pluto-Uranus square, uh, as far as it coming into, together into an exact square, that happened on March 16th. And shortly thereafter, we had a new moon solar eclipse at the last degree of Pisces, the 29th degree of Pisces, and very shortly after that, of course, the moon and then the sun moved into the sign of Aries, the first sign of the zodiac, signifying a new beginning. So, again, you know, as I discussed in uh, my weekly reading videos and in some of my Facebook posts, that this new moon solar eclipse was a combination of endings and beginnings all rolled up into one because a new moon is always about new beginnings and the solar eclipse or the eclipse part of that magnified that new beginning energy. However, it was at the last degree of the last sign of the zodiac, Pisces. So we did have a certain amount of endings and new beginnings occurring at the same time. And now we're getting ready to have a full moon lunar eclipse, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I was guided to do this video, to uh, go forward a little bit in time, so to speak, and let you know some of the things that my angels and guides are pointing out to me that maybe would be helpful to share with you in understanding where we're all going as far as our, the changes, our evolution, and our growth. So, again, this is March 29th, and the first week or so of April is going to be very, very important. It's going to be very transitioning um, and highly important for us because on Saturday, April 4th, we have that full moon lunar eclipse. And again, that eclipse energy is going to heighten the effects of that full moon. And full moons are usually about releasing and letting go of an old cycle uh, so that we can gear up and get ready for uh, a new direction or a new energy to come into our lives. The reason why, besides it being in eclipse, the reason why this particular full moon, lunar eclipse, is especially important is because it happens at 14 degrees of Libra. And if you go back to March 16th when we had the final Uranus-Pluto square, that occurred at 15 degrees of Aries, which is opposite of Libra, and 15 degrees of Capricorn, which is what's considered a square aspect to the sign of Libra. So Uranus, the planet of changes and redirections and the unexpected and higher dimensional energies, was at 15 degrees of Aries in that Uranus-Pluto square. 
And Pluto, the planet that rules death and rebirth and huge transformation, um, and tearing down old structures of society and within ourselves, within our ego selves, so that we can kind of rise, you know, out of the ashes and be born anew, so to speak, so we can transform ourselves and transform our planet. That was at 15 degrees of Capricorn during that Uranus-Pluto square. Again, 15 degrees Aries is opposite from this 14 degrees of Libra solar eclipse. And that 15 degrees of Capricorn is in a 90 degree angle, which we call a square aspect in astrology, to again that full moon lunar eclipse at 14 degrees Libra. So whenever you have, you know, in astrology, when we look at transits and aspects, we usually give it about a five degree uh, orb, what we call a five degree orb. So and in, some astrologers even go a little bit beyond that. But the fact that it's only a degree away from the Uranus-Pluto square is very, very significant, I feel. So I feel like this is going to be hugely powerful. And very shortly after the full moon lunar eclipse on Saturday, April 4th, we have the moon, of course, which is in Libra, setting off the Uranus-Pluto square because those planets are so slow moving that they're, you know, very slowly moving apart. They're still definitely within that tight orb of one another and creating that square aspect. So the moon is going to then be setting that off. And then going into Saturday, or excuse me, Sunday, uh, April 5th, the sun, which is in Aries, is going to be making a square or challenging aspect to Pluto, again, part of that Uranus-Pluto square. The next day, Monday, the 6th of April, Uranus is coming up to meet Uranus, the other part of that Uranus-Pluto square, uh, in what's called a conjunction. And when they meet together in the same degree, in the same sign, it's called a conjunction. So the fact that the sun is setting off the Uranus-Pluto square after the moon is setting off the Uranus-Pluto square after the full moon lunar eclipse is pretty much at the degree of the last Uranus-Pluto square, I feel is very significant, very transformational. Um, you know, and again, Pluto is about our power too. So, and, and the sun is about our identity, especially the sun in Aries. Aries is, again, the first sign of the zodiac. It's about our individuality. It's about our courage, our strength, our self-initiative, our self-identity. So I feel like this uh, energy with, with uh, the sun squaring Pluto and then conjuncting Uranus on the 5th and the 6th is empowering us. I feel like it's really empowering us as a soul. It's empowering our sense of identity. It's, it's um, expanding our sense of courage and initiative to move forward or to step into our power, to step into our truths. And then if that wasn't enough, on my, uh, Wednesday the 8th of April, Jupiter, which is the planet of blessings, now, it's in the sign of Leo, and it's been retrograde for a little while. But on Wednesday, the 8th of April, Jupiter goes into direct motion. Okay, just like we have Mercury retrograde sometimes. Mercury is a faster-moving planet, though, so it only stays retrograde for around three weeks. And it internalizes the energy when a planet goes retrograde. So as Jupiter, which is the sign of, or excuse me, the planet that rules our belief systems, and in the sign of Leo, which rules our creative self-expression, while it has been retrograde, it's been allowing us to kind of look internally about what our truths are, what our beliefs are, what we believe in. If we believe in ourselves, if we believe in our sense of creativity and creative self-expression, if we believe in ourselves as far as shining our light out for all the world to see, because that's another thing that Leo is about, is about shining our light. So now that it's going direct, it's time that our goals and our ambitions, our paths, our relationships can start to now expand and grow on the outer level because as it's been retrograde, again, it's been kind of, you know, going through that process of expansion but on more of an internal level, you know, within us, uh, the deep essence of our soul. We've been, again, going over our belief systems and kind of modifying them and 
Now it's time to bring them out and express them after Jupiter goes direct. Now it's time for our goals and our career paths and our destiny paths to start to expand and grow. Now it's time for the blessings, which Jupiter also rules. Jupiter rules blessings and abundance and prosperity. Now it's time for that to grow and expand. So I really feel like these first eight days especially of the month of April are going to be hugely positive and hugely important. So take the time, you know, during this time period, from, from the time you watch this video until this happens, and even after, because time and space really doesn't exist, so we can kind of go back in time and we can kind of set our intentions out to the universe, out to God, out to our angels and guides, and still have them bring forth the manifestation of, of what it is that we're intending or desiring in our lives. So don't feel like you've missed anything if you're watching this video a little bit late, but still put that energy out to the universe to allow all of these blessings to expand and grow into your lives. Now there was a couple of other things that I jotted down that I wanted to also touch base on. and. That is that, you know, we have Saturn in the sign of Sagittarius uh, retrograde. Now, Saturn is about karmic lessons. But as it's been in the sign of Sagittarius, I feel like it's actually been bringing forth the manifestation of our blessings. It's been bringing forth the manifestations of our truth, our, our real internal and authentic truth within us. Now that it's Go, uh, retrograde, and it just went retrograde not too long ago, it's going to retrograde back to the zero degree of Sagittarius, but I, I still feel like this is positive. I feel like there's an internal manifestation going on that we're, we're understanding and learning on an internal level about what our truth really is and what it means to be authentic and to live an authentic life and to follow our passions in life. So I feel like this is still going to be a very positive thing. We have to understand, though, that when we get to the uh, month of June, again, June seems to be, be very important, and of course, with the monthly reading that will be coming up for June at that time and the weekly readings that will be done, and I may do another Soul Reflections video um, when we get closer to that time, but I want to mention in this video that there's a lot happening in June that I feel is significant, and that is that Saturn will be retrograding back into the sign of Scorpio. Remember most of 2014, or all of 2014 really, when Saturn was in Scorpio, and we were dealing with karmic lessons of our sense of power and stepping into our power, and it was really a hugely purging time period, purging out old energies of disempowerment that we no longer needed to hold on to. So now that Saturn will be retrograding back into Scorpio for a short time, it's going to give us that chance to um, take care of any details from last year's empowering energies or learning about our power, you know, or releasing circumstances, situations, and relationships out of our lives that are disempowering for us. And just briefly, the time period that it will be in Scorpio, um, it will be retrograding back into Scorpio in June. I didn't write down the date, sorry. Um, and then it will go direct in, on August 2nd. Now, when it goes direct, when Saturn, and Sa or when Saturn and Scorpio goes direct on August 2nd, it will still be in Scorpio for some time after that before moving back into Sagittarius. It doesn't actually move back into the sign of Sagittarius until September 17th. So again, from about mid-June or so until just after mid-September, we're going to have that time period to, again, take care of any final details or learn any final lessons or uh, release any final energies of disempowerment that we need to um, so that we can truly take off. Because again, when Saturn moves back into Sagittarius, just like it has been here um, in Sagittarius for a little while, I feel like it's really bringing blessings and opportunities. And um, it's bringing us, again, it's manifesting and securing us in, in our sense of truths. And I feel like this is very, very positive. Now, the other thing that happens in June while Saturn is doing all this is that both Venus and Jupiter are in the sign of Leo, and it's making a very positive aspect to Uranus in Aries. 
Now, Leo and Aries are both fire signs. They're both about our passions. It's um, a highly creative and spiritual energy. And the fact that Venus and Jupiter are in Leo is very positive because both Venus and Jupiter are called the benefics in astrology. Jupiter, you might have seen some of my posts on Facebook, I call Jupiter the great benefic, and that's what we call that in, in astrology because it's the greatest beneficial planet energy that we have. Venus is called the lesser benefic. It doesn't mean you know, that it's, uh, it's not negative in any way. It's just called lesser because it's a little bit less than Jupiter. But it's still a benefic planet. It's still a bringer of blessings. Venus brings great blessings into our lives. So, again, the fact that both Venus and Jupiter are in this wonderfully creative, optimistic, sunny sign of, of Leo and coming into a positive connection with Uranus and Aries, which is uh, initiation and new beginnings and uh, freedom and stepping into our truths and authenticity. And this happens right before Saturn goes back into Scorpio. Again, I feel like it's that little, kind of that little bang that we need to make sure that as we're going through that Saturn retrograde in Scorpio, we don't feel like we did last year. You know, I feel like we feel a lot stronger this time. And it's just that, again, we're just finalizing any details and washing away any remnants of old energies that need to be washed away. And then if we fast forward to the month of November, just very briefly, you know, we've had the north and the south node in the sign of Aries and Libra um, for quite some time. And as the north and south node has been in the signs of Aries and Libra, it's been uh, focusing the energies and attentions on relationship matters. And this is about our sense of self and identity versus our partners or other people in our lives. It's about our wants, our needs, and our desires versus what other people's needs and wants and desires are. And this can be whether it's a romantic relationship, uh, a family relationship, any kind of significant other relationship, or even friendships. You know, it's just, again, it's that balance of give and take and that compromise that we um, have to have or should have within relationships. In November, somewhere between November 11th and 12th, somewhere around there, the nodes are going to finally shift out of Aries and Libra and shift into Virgo and Pisces. Now, what does that mean? I, I feel like this means that from now, which again is the end of March, until around November 11th and 12th, we're still looking at contemplating, working through uh, energies that deal with partnership matters, with people in our lives, so again, with that balance of give and take, with that balance of the divine masculine and the divine feminine energies, and how we relate to one another. And... For some, it's been ending relationships as we open ourselves up to who it is we're really supposed to be with, if you want to call it a soulmate relationship, a true and authentic and equal partnership, an equal soulmate relationship. That's part of what I feel like this has been going on, uh, what's been going on here. And even if you're not in a relationship, it's still about realizing what your patterns are in relationships and working with those patterns so that you can release those uh, patterns of energy that you no longer need to hold on to. So again, so you can open up to that true balance that is necessary for uh, an equal, positive, mutually respective and mutually loving and mutually beneficial partnership to take place. So then also in November, and this seemed kind of significant to me because I wasn't looking for it, but when I jotted down the time period that the nodes move out of Aries and Libra and into Virgo and Pisces, around the same time period between November 8th and 13th, both Venus, which is the divine feminine ruling love and relationships, and Mars, the divine masculine, which is passion and sexuality, the masculine principle, those will be actually coming into connection with or in a, into a conjunction with the nodes. So I found that very interesting, uh, which to me really signifies that any relationship patterns or energies that we're working on, again, whether alone or within a partnership, I feel like there's something hugely transitional and 
um, transforming, uh, something activating, something energizing during that time. Again, this is the period between November 8th through about November 13th. So if, again, you're working on patterns within relationships or, or been trying to intend for or magnetize to you um, uh, the best soulmate relationship that you can possibly had, do your work from now until November because I feel like, again, this is a activation point, a transitional point. And I feel like I feel like all of this is very positive. And I know we've been through a lot and it's been intense at times. But I feel like this is all bringing us to a much more empowering, positive, optimistic place, and it's putting us on our authentic destiny path and life path. It's, it's assisting us in stepping into the truth of who we really are, which is a divine spark of God, a divine light of the universe. We are unconditional love, and we're here to express that unconditional love, and we're here to live a life full of happiness and joy and abundance and prosperity. So thank you all for all of your support, all of your comments, all of your likes. Thank you for booking my services. Thank you for sending donations in. And again, if you'd like to connect with me more, my new website is sacredsoulempowerment.com. You can also reach it through ColleenLemma.com. My new business Facebook page is Sacred Soul Empowerment, or I also do daily posts on my Facebook page, Colleen Lemma. So thank you to all. I wish you all many blessings of love and light. Angel blessings. Thank you.